We're on lesson 6 of chapter 10, which is the probability of independent and dependent events. First we're going to determine independence or dependence. Then we're going to find probability of independent events. Then we'll find the probability of dependent events. First let's find the difference between independent and dependent. Sometimes we find probability of two events in a row. And if the events that happen in a row are independent, the outcome of one event has no influence on the other one. For example, if I spin two spinners, what this one lands on has absolutely nothing to do with what this one lands on. They are completely independent of each other. And when you find the probability of two independent events, the probability of both those events is the probability of the first one times the probability of the second one. So if it's a 1 in 10 chance that it's going to land on the 5, and it's a 1 in 10 chance that it's going to land on the 5 on here, together they would equal 1 in 100. Dependent events are different. The outcome of one event does have an effect on the next one. For example, if I have two blue marbles and three red marbles, it's a 2 in 5 chance that I would get a blue marble, so a 2 out of 5. If I take a red marble with the first one, randomly, then I'm left with only two red marbles left. See, one of them is gone. And if I'm going to pick another one, it would be a 2 in 4 chance. My chances got better because one of that red ones is gone. It would be the opposite effect if I would have picked a blue one the first time. It would be two, and 2 out of 5 the first time, and then one of the blue ones would be gone, so now we only have 1 out of 4. So based on picking the red or the blue, my probability changes for the second one. So that's how the formula goes. The probability of both events is the probability of the first event, and then probability of the second event after the first probability event has occurred. First, let's decide whether each set of events is independent or dependent. Let's explain our answer. It says Erica rolls a 3 on one number cube and then 2 on another number cube. So she's rolling two separate number cubes. So if this one lands on a 5, this has nothing to do with the other number cube. And when things have nothing to do with each other, that means they're independent. And I explain that vertebrally because it takes me a long time to write that. Tomoko chooses a 7th grader from her team from a group of 7th and 8th graders. And then Juan chooses a different 7th grader from the remaining students. These two would be related because Juan cannot pick the person that Tomoko picked. For example, if we had 3 7th graders and 4 8th graders, if Tomoko picks this 7th grader, Juan cannot pick that 7th grader anymore. Juan would have to pick from the rest of these 6, which has an impact on his choice. So these are not independent. They are dependent. Now we can find the probability of independent events. It says find the probability of flipping a coin and getting heads, and then rolling a 6 on a number cube. So here's our first event, and here's our second event. Flipping a coin and rolling a number cube have nothing to do with each other. They're not going to impact the other one. Well, my theoretical probability is there's two options, heads or tails, and I want heads, so one out of two. And I had to multiply that times the other one, which is rolling a six. So there's six total sides to the dice, and I want to get the six, only one of them. So I do one half times one sixth, and that's going to give me an answer of one twelfth. So I followed that formula of probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. Now let's find the probability of dependent events. It says Micah has five $1 bills, three $10 bills, and two $20 bills in her wallet. She picks two bills at random. What is the probability of her picking the two $20 bills? So she has five $1 bills, three $10 bills, and two $20 bills. So for looking at theoretical probability, the total number of outcomes are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we put that on the bottom. The odds of her picking the $20 bill the first time would be 2 out of 10. But after she's picked that, that one is now gone. Meaning that there are now how many to pick from? There are a total of 9 to pick from. And there's only one $20 bill left if she wants to pick that the second time. So the probability of this happening where she gets both $20 bills would be 2 over 10 times 1 over 9. And if we multiply across, this would be 2 over 90. Simplifying that would be 1 out of 45. So this would be the probability of her picking the two $20 bills.